First man. Um, I thought it was. Mm, I thought it was an excellent movie. I mean, yeah, I did. Second it's, man. <laughs> the second opinion. <laughs> I, I, I thought that. Um, I thought that I really was blown away by Whiplash when it came out. Uh, I think that it was one of the best. I think it was definitely one of the best movies of that year, and I think it's it's one of the best movies um, in terms of having a genre that that's because I don't generally like movies about musicians that much. I mean, they're all right, but I, I don't remember seeing many movies about musicians that I've been really blown away by. Were you rushing or were you dragging? I, I don't know. <laughs> if you deliberately sabotage my band, I will gut you like a pig. Oh, my dear God. Are you one of those single-tier people? You are a worthless pansy ass who is now weeping and slobbering all over my drum set like a nine-year-old girl. Like that sort of completely turns the genre on its head because it's a sort of a, it's kind of a thriller. Mm. It's a kind of a thriller masked as a, a movie about about a drummer. Yeah. Um, and then I saw La La Land and I, we've talked about La La Land on, mm. on, 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 our, on our episodes as well. Um, not a huge fan of it in terms of, of, uh, of simply being a movie, but as a musical, I thought it was really inventive How and I thought that uh, it deserved what it got in terms of, of, jazz of about the future. so on and so on. And so on. But um, but with First Man, the first thing that came to mind was Oscar bait. It was just, here's a movie that's about, uh, that has a really, really good actor in the center who basically holds up the whole, what, two and a half hours of, mm. of running time and then this... Uh, then there's this grand thing about the human race bettering itself Five, in difficult circumstances. Four, three, two. I mean, the whole thing that's been done already by in Apollo 13. Do you question whether the program's worth the cost in money and in lives? You're down here and you look up and you don't think about it too much, but space exploration changes your perception. Uh, the only thing that I found different about First Man was its general mood of sort of world weariness and sadness, mm. which is unusual in yeah. these kinds of movies. And the stark reality that it was actually, it was a really, 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 really perilous. I mean, it's always perilous to be a pioneer in mm. these kinds of things. Yeah. Um, and to go into space in a metal box and basically have the amount of computational power of less than a, a modern cell phone it just blows the mind mm. but but as a movie i wasn't in any way blown away by it and i'm expecting now to be blown away by mm. damien Chazelle. well you're spoiled i'm i am spoiled <laughs> i am spoiled but but that's the problem when you when when your first movie is so good mm. and your second movie is almost up to par mm. then you're yeah. not expecting that thing to go away yeah because that's the gene that, that, that's the, the curse of the genius mm. in a way that you have to completely and co constantly be as good as everything you've ever done yeah uh, mm -hmm. well it's it's basically because it is an oscar bait movie i totally agree with that but um the thing about it is that um it's Oscar bait is sort of like a genre. It's a very, very old genre of movies. And when you have this new director who is a really inventive person, it is interesting to give him this sort of, um, let's call it a constraint, that you have to follow this recipe that is the recipe of this genre called Oscar bait movies, and then see what he can do with it. and. Well, what we can surmise from the result is that he is clearly competent enough to make a movie like that, but he is not, even he is not able to escape 
the confines of that genre. So the movie is not, it doesn't become a great movie like the ones you were describing that are really this uh, sort of innovative, technical, really dazzling cinematic things. This was just really good and um, for me the extra thing about it was that it was really based on the true story. And when you think about the true story, I mean, it's really... And you're uh, saying that La La Land isn't? No, the, uh, no, uh, they changed the end. In the true story, they got married oh, at, yeah. at the end. Yeah. They had to make it, make it a little bit sadder. <laughs> but yeah, so, I mean, it just... Uh, it's Because I, I really didn't know much about the first uh, moon landing, and it was... It's, it's, it's insane business. Yeah. I yeah, that, mean, yeah, yeah, that's true. But um, I think that, uh, well, in this sense, it's, it's obvious that we should be expecting a Damien Chazelle, James Bond movie in, at any sort of <laughs> point in the, in the near future. Because <laughs> he's, he's going to... Having a stroke. <laughs> he's going to... Um, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a classic example of, a, yeah. of constraints. A phone book of constraints that you That's have true. to live with. But yeah, I, I agree. I'm, I don't think that Oscar bait movies in themselves, I'm really, I'm always really looking forward to, um, to, to January and February mm. and March when the Oscar movies usually, because they're a bit later here than yeah. they're in the States. Um, um, when that, when that, time comes it's usually the best time of year to mm. go see movies because Oscar Bay I, I mean I'm not that anti Oscar that I, I think that usually if you get a best movie um, nomination from the Oscars the films don't tend to be shit that's true they might be something that I, I mean, for example, one year when they were nominated Beasts of the Southern Wild, I really disliked that movie mm. in a way. But I still understood why it was nominated mm. because it was interesting and it come, came out of left field and it's really, really weird and, and, and well, in a way, well made, but it's just, I, I, I got turned off by the whole movie. But still, it wasn't shit. Mm. So Oscar bait movies themselves, even the worst kind of Oscar bait movies, which for me tend to be the, the Steven Spielberg kind mm. that he takes, like The Post was last year. It was a fairly kind of a boring movie mm. about kind of a boring subject and really sort of Spielbergian in a way that is very efficiently told. And there's 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 the obvious good guys and the obvious bad guys mm. and there's you know uh, very clear cut American mm. movie. Even those I tend to like to watch more than the the the, the big dumb movie, the, yeah. the summer blockbuster. So, so I don't really have a problem with Oscar bait. I, I just have a, I just have a problem with. It. It'd be interesting to know what Chazelle himself thought about the project. I mean, was mm. he really enthusiastic about making first? Because, because I have a feeling that. That he wasn't. I sort of want to, <laughs> sort of want him <laughs> to be sort of having to sort of pander to the producer's <laughs> wishes a bit um, and and I'm hoping that this wasn't the film that he really really wanted to make because yeah. if that's true then he's more boring of a filmmaker than I I gave him credit for yeah but how do, that's the thing um, how do you make an interesting movie about a true story I mean it's the ultimate constraint basically can't have dancing elves no, but but I think that even this in this movie, like the the, the things that were o I think obviously fake, like him taking his daughter's um, uh, bracelet and leaving it on the moon. I think that was. Would you the really fake? I was actually thinking about that. Could you really? Would you really fake it? I mean, everybody in the family knows. That, no, he didn't take the bracelet. Oh, come on, man. Then you just show it in the movie. I mean, why would you? It's. I don't. I I don't think that. There's any possibility that that's true. 
I don't think hmm. that there's any possibility because it that is, is a, it's just <laughs> dishonest. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it, uh, but that's the whole thing. It's not even when you're based on true events. It's never a documentary. If oh, you're no. making a feature film, you're uh, you you have the right as a filmmaker to take liberties yeah. within the source material. And I I have no doubt that they've taken other liberties there as well because because um, I'm sure that that the whole vibe around the the moon race wasn't as tragic as it was painted mm. out to be here. I, I think that the, obviously there's high stakes and obviously people get killed and so on, but these people have uh, are in it to win it in a mm. kind of way. And and I think that... that that's, even actually, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah you've seen the, the right stuff, the movie. Have you seen it? Uh, it's been so long. Yeah. I hardly remember anything yeah. about the movie. I, mean, I haven't seen it in a long time either. But what I do remember from the movie is the the uh, people depicted in that movie were really these daredevils. Yeah, like they were really in it for the basically in it to win it. They were really doing in, insane, impossible things. Yeah, yeah, you have to be. Yeah. I mean, the the pilots that actually have to. Like, like there was this scene in in, in First Man when he, mm. he has to eject from the yeah. the the sort of experimental plane, and mm. it's that's completely insane. Mm. I mean, to go do something like that, you, that you really have to be prepared to not come back. Yeah, you have to be the coolest coolest motherfucker <laughs> in the room. <laughs> I mean, really, yeah. it's insane. <laughs> yeah, and especially for. It's especially I have interesting. A panic attack in the library. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's it's especially interesting in 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 contrast to the time where to be sort of successful in that way, you had to be a family man as well. Yeah. Uh, that that there, there's something there was something about the 50s and 60s, the core family values mm, that were yeah. there. That you even with those daredevil pilots, they usually had a family. Yeah. And having a family in that kind of situation, that, mm. that I mean, the people who the 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 spouses yeah. what they had have to go through to be with somebody who wants to go to the moon inside a mm. tin box there's it, this line of dialogue in the movie when they were talking about it um, do you remember the uh, s two of these wives were talking about the lives that they had chosen with these men and then the other woman said about her friend that had married a dentist and now had been calls her every month to tell her that she wants a divorce. So basically they kind of, may, I can understand the allure of the lifestyle of living with someone who is doing extraordinary things, even yeah. though they are dangerous. Yeah, 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 that's true. I don't, I don't dispute that. It's just that this is, um, this is really, re I mean, the things that can, for example, when the guys get baked inside the inside the shuttle, just you know, sitting on the ground when there's the leak mm. inside the cockpit and they all die, yeah. it's just you know, going like that. It's yeah. it's not the most glamorous, no. <laughs> glamorous kind of death. And I, I was thinking about this parable in the movie that you have this um, you have this really sick daughter, and um, and the um, and the. Um, Neil Armstrong is trying to find the best doctors to cure her. And um, it's sort of a funny thing that at the same time he is at the forefront of developing technology that is eventually going to help similar children. Because when technology goes up, it just goes up and then you apply it to multiple different fields. So it's... Uh, it is an interesting idea, the people who are creating these technologies that are making our lives a lot easier and better and uh, keeping us healthier. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, um, yeah, that, that, that was my take. Yeah, it's, it, it, is, it is a good movie. It's not, it, it's not perfect, in my opinion. Or like Whiplash, to me, was quite near a perfect movie. But, but yeah. Um, I, I'd be interesting first of all to see what he does next, and I'd yeah. be interesting to interested to hear what he thought actually thought about making this one. And um, Norm Norm Macdonald has a really good joke about the moon landing in his Netflix special, so I recommend that one. Oh. Yeah. 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 The last guy to be on the moon, his name was Harrison Schmidt. <laughs> now, who ever heard of him? 
Meanwhile, he goes all the way to the moon, hangs around there for a while, and comes back. He's not famous, but a girl with a giant ass is famous. <laughs> now, when I was young, a man who went to the moon was famous. And a lady with a giant ass, you'd go, can you stand over there? Because this is... 